Hello, 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 my beautiful viewers. Now, as you can see, we are at the lobby for Tombs of a Mascot. Now, Sync's actually here, which is interesting, but we have been playing this since it came out, and we've been having some fun with it. Now, I've got a few clips because I did stream for seven hours, but this video is mainly going to be about trying to do a solo run on normal mode. Now, it's still day one. Normal mode's pretty tough. The gap between zero and 150 invocation is a lot higher than I thought. Because not only do they get additional abilities, upgrade, upgrades to like the boss mechanics, also the stats are increased. For example, if I go to make a party, my invocations that I've got on make it 150. But as well as that, it gives the stat modifiers for hit points, defense, accuracy and damage plus 60% on 150. It's crazy. So this is going to scale incredibly fast. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play some clips from the stream, just some funny ones, some interesting ones, I've got no idea, for a few minutes, and then we're going to get into a solo 150 run. Let's get it. Is, okay, have you two literally stuck? <laughs> Remember, we did put double dung on, right? There's this Agile Scarab behind us, what does it even do? Oh, no! No! You can walk after the dung's fired, you can walk after the dung's fired, just a heads up. I mean, I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to eat. I'm, I'd rather die than eat because someone can finish this now so I can save supplies. Everyone follow that same mentality. Yeah, honestly. So pe pe people, people can finish this now. Don't use any more supplies. How did that still hit me at 40? I'm not eating. I'm not eating. I'm not eating. I got it! I got the timing! I got the redemption timing! No! No! <laughs> what? Oh, you must have to pray right early. What the fuck? You must have to pray basically as it fires it. This is how you need to move, by the way, to dodge all the things. This gets a little bit more difficult here. Yeah. I've got 13 prayer. <laughs> Probably. Thing is, this th there's there's no way that I could solo this with a carry on seven man scaling, is there? Because like, if I'm looking at this, it looks like I could. Oh, this is gonna get so difficult. Jesus, uh, I'm fucked now. <laughs> No! 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 Wait! 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 These things restore prayer as well! Wait! Wait! What? Oh, I'm so sad. No! Come on! Okay. I hope you enjoyed those clips. I sure did. Sorry if there was a fan noise in some of them. It was red hot. I had to turn my camera off at one point and like... Just stick the fan on, so sorry for that. Anyway, this is what we're going to be running in the solo run. We're running softcore run, which gives us three lives. We're going to be running walk the path, which means that completing a path during the raid will cause other paths to level up. This is really interesting, because for example with Akka, there's like a Simon Says thing that's normally four, but I leveled it up to level two in a solo, and it had six instead, which is crazy. We've also got some boss specific buffs, so for Kefri, its eggs will be more troublesome, which just basically means there's more of them, I think. For Zabak, it's got access to blood magic, and the radius and healing of it is increased. For Barba, the shockwave from his slam is a wider area. And for the final boss, we've got four active. Ancient Haste, Acceleration, Penetration and Overclock, which just basically makes the entire fight faster and harder. But it's really fun, so let's send it. And here we are, inside the beautiful tome. Tomb? Inside the beautiful tomb. As you can see, because we've got Walk the Path on, the path levels are all currently level 0. Meaning the first boss that we do is going to be the easiest and the rest are going to get scaled up accordingly. Because of this, my preferred order, the solos at least from what I've been doing, is Crocodile, Akka, and then Baba, and the Scabrous minion. The Scabrous one honestly is pretty easy, and Baba you don't take much damage if you avoid everything properly. But this is quite a long fight. Ooh, and Iron just got the thread. That's sick. Congratulations, Mag. And the Crocodile, to be honest, is the one with the most white potential if you don't get the Jug right. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the crocodile first and then Arca if I've got enough supplies and the rest. Let's send it. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to complete this because I have not completed a solo yet, but I am down to try. So in this room, we just grab a water container. You do some sepulchre style running. Now you pick up some water from the waterfall. You've got 100% that you add on or 100. If you get hit on the way back, you actually lose some of that. So you've got to be very careful to not be hit because if you do get hit by any of these obstacles you'll lose to 50% than 25. If I put this in it's going to have 100 because I didn't fail. And now that one's dried up. Now these crocodiles spawn and eat up the water but what I'm going to do is obviously just kill these and then do another path and try to get another 100. And here we are. Now there's no crocodiles here so I should just put this on and it should be done. Nice. One minute one second. Not bad at all. Now fizzer back. I like using the buffer. So let's do that and we just basically hit it. Now it fires out two different types of attack. It's got a giant stone, which is not that one. This one's mage, that's a magic attack and that is as well. And then soon it's going to fire out a giant stone, which is a range attack, probably. Anyway, this isn't going to be a guide to raids, but I might make a small solo raids guide after this if I can actually complete it just for the weekend or something. But that's the range attack. Let's see if we can get it done without using many supplies. And... I died because I hate the damn jug mechanic. I didn't use any supplies, so I'm going to go back in because I've got the um, soft core run on, which is three lives. So let's teleport back in. Essentially, it's got a mechanic where you've got to kick a bucket into some poison to clear it to stand behind some rocks or it does a load of damage to you with a raw. And sometimes the, just, the bucket just does, doesn't do what I want it to, man. Let's try again. This wave mechanic's really cool, though. Now, I'm not going to eat here because I'd rather reset. So if I'm very careful here, I shouldn't be hit at all. Oh, and I'm out of prayer. Did we get it or did we die? Oh, we got it bang on. Now, when you're in groups, this fang and stuff is what determines if you're the MVP or not. But, oh, someone else just got the thread for the room pouch. That must not be that rare. That's pretty cool. Yeah, first boss down, two lives left. Hopefully it's a bit easier. But as you can see now, Arka's leveled up and Barba's leveled up. So we have to be very careful. Now, the Path of Het has a light puzzle, and on this puzzle, what you need to do is grab a pickaxe. Anyway, the light puzzle, essentially, you just reflect the light and make it hit the shield. That is literally it. Now, it is worth noting, it can hit this part of the statue or the shield head-on or the shield at the side, and that's fine. So all I've got to do here is open up that, grab another mirror, and then just reflect it up. And then when that's done, it's basically Zolcano. You just go and mine. Now, the red does supply bronze pickaxes, but if you bring your own in, you can get higher max hits. With the bronze, for me at my mining level, it's 13. But I think other pickaxes work like they do at Zolcano, where they do buff it. But don't quote me on that. And then you get another puzzle. Normally, you always solve this in two runs, whatever the raid size. So for this one, I'm going to go upwards. And then we have to hit the shield, so we have to mine this wall. Grab the last mirror, and just deflect it down. Nice and simple. And... Obviously, I'm an idiot and missed. And there we go, and this should be it. This raid is incredibly designed. This is just a better crab's room. And now, on to the boss. Now, the boss for this is really cool. As you can see, there's a clock on the floor. And the boss prays. Now, whenever he prays, it swaps, so you can only attack him with one attack style at a time. I'll show you what I mean. But we basically go in, pray melee, and smack him a little bit. Honestly, I'm not sure how hard these solos are meant to be or are going to be. I've not actually... I've sent one and I got to the last boss and it seems pretty doable on 150. So I'm not sure how high you'll be able to go with it. So he's swapped. So now I, I use melee on him and he uses range. So just simply swap. When you flash in black, if you move, it'll spawn some stuff on the floor like so. And in a team, that can be very annoying. Now, when these wardens spawn, you simply kill one. The boss is invulnerable. And this is Simon Says, so red, white, yellow, white, red. You've got to just stand in the quadrant that flashed in that order and then you don't get damaged. If you stand in the wrong one, you get damaged quite a lot. So just bear that in mind. Then the boss will respawn in the middle with the same attack style, but he has now changed it. So now you use range on the boss. You can attack the wardens with whatever style, but it needs to die. When this timer gets full, all quadrants do a special attack that damage anyone in that quadrant so if i can't kill this warden quick enough i'm gonna take some damage looks like i can though there we go and now i can attack the boss if i walk the boss into one of the other quadrants he'll actually be coming vulnerable 
Now, if it becomes invulnerable, obviously you can't hit him. So it's kind of a problem. So you have to make sure he's always in the quadrant where the warden is destroyed. And now I've got to do the same thing again, kill another warden. But he's doing the Simon Says again, so I've got to be careful. I think that was red, black, red. It's worth noting, you don't have to stand on the icon, you just have to stand in the quadrant. So doing something like this is absolutely fine. And he is now requiring melee. <clears throat> so again, you can hit the warden with any style you want. I'm just using a sang to make sure that I heal up a little bit. And then when the warden dies, you can attack the boss again. Now he's just swapped, so I've got to put range gear on. And now I've got Simon Says again. Now, the Simon Says, I've realised, it starts at 4, which is like entry level raiding and just 4 in general. And then what happens is every raid level, so you know Walk the Path buffed his raid level. What happens is, every single raid level you've got up, so at the minute Ark is raid level 1, he does 5 Simon Says. If he's raid level 2, he'll do 6. If he's raid level 3, he'll do 7, etc. So it's a really, really, really interesting mechanic and use of raid level. I do really enjoy this raid, it is really unique. As you saw then, the timer went up and I was in a quadrant with a warden, so I, I ended up getting damaged. Oh, I genuinely love this raid. There's, there's nothing about it that I dislike, which is crazy. Like, everything is good. It's just kind of difficult at times, which is important. It's a good thing that it's difficult. So you see I can't attack him because he's invulnerable. I have to walk him into here and then you can hit him. I personally like to do them in a clockwise direction. Like I said, I've not really completed a solo yet. This is like my second attempt, but thought I'd record it because why not? And it's definitely doable at 150 invocation level. Okay, and that is him down, but he has one more phase. He heals a little bit and goes to the edge of the room. Now you can only melee him here and he doesn't hit back, but there's loads of these orbs flying. Now I thought this would be really easy because I'm a big fan of bullet hell games, but they fly on, di on like diagonal paths, right? And it makes it very difficult. I'm not sure why it's so difficult because realistically it shouldn't be if you take your time, but I like praying redemption and just smacking it a little bit. You can see the paths that they're traveling on, but it's like when they're traveling diagonal, it really throws me off. Come on, hit. Oh man. Oh, we got it, okay. I just brewed at the end by accident, but we got it. Now we're two bosses down. What that means is when we go back to the lobby, this person exists, a helpful spirit, and you can claim rewards from them. Now it's kind of like a roguelike because you've got three options and they're different every time. I don't know if it depends on how well you've done or what, but there's some really unique things. This is just a restore. This is just a brew. This heals you over time, but it heals more than like a shark. This is a buff that boosts all your stats to 125 if you've got 99s. And this fully heals yourself and your prayer and your run energy and your prayer and health go to like 120%. So I'm gonna take this bucket, it's really good. They all go into a supply scroll and then you just take out what you need. It's really handy. In case I've got the smelling salts, I can now drop my pots. And the ambrosia's there as a backup. Now, as I said, we are two bosses down, we have two left. If you can look on the left, Barbar -Bar the monkey is now raid level two and the scarabs are still zero. So if I go do the scarabs, I should be pretty easy right now. Now, this is my favorite puzzle room because it is actually a puzzle. Take note of this because this is just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? But if I enter this, you get attacked by scarabs and they're just attack with range. So just pray range and you won't get damaged. But every single room's a puzzle. This one is literally Simon Says, so I just follow the five lights that light up without standing on the others. Yep, like that, which is done. And then you can't exit, it doesn't let you. What you do is you have to crawl through this passage and go over to the other side and complete this puzzle. Now it's worth noting that in teams, you do one side each, or like you have half the people on each side to complete these. This is an interesting one, because basically you have to hit a pillar. If you're wrong, boulders fall from the sky. If you're right, it lights up, and you have to remember the pattern. So that's done. So then I've got to hit this one again. Ooh. And nope. So it's that one. And then nope. <laughs> so it's like this. Yep, so that one's done completely. And then these doors open up. This puzzle is basically just an addition puzzle. So if you inspect this, it says 32. Now I need to find things that add up to 32. So birds are six. So that's six, 12, 18. 
this is seven. So that's 25. And then this is seven. So that should be done. Yep. And then we'll go over to the other side and it's a light puzzle. Now, I hate light puzzles. Obviously, you, t you stand on a pad and it turns all three off, right? So for example, if we do this, all of them are on but two. But the good thing about this light puzzle is if you can't be bothered, you can just right click flip and you take 20 damage, but it flips it around. So if I take 40 damage there, that's done. And then I can move on to the next part. The next part is literally just pairs. In the duo, this is really fun, or in a team. Because you find a boot and then the other person has to find it and match them up, which is great. But it's not as simple as that, unfortunately, in a solo, because you've got to keep running across from one side to the other and finding everything. <laughs> as you can see, when you match them up, they all light up. That's a star, that's a diamond, and you just got to make sure you get everything right. That's a boot, which I think was the bottom right. Knives, which I think were the bottom right over here. And then we're done. And then that's it. With all them puzzles complete, you can now enter the boss room. Now, from my experience, Keris is really good here. You actually don't have to pray here. So the only thing that damages you on this phase that you need to pray against is this fireball that comes from the sky. Now, if you're praying mage, it hits about 18. If you're not praying, it hits about 36. So it's up to you if you want to pray or not. It's kind of like P2 Verzik. Now, I have found that the Keris hits really well, but at the minute it's not. <laughs> but it hits better than a whip at least. I imagine the Scythe or something will be best here. Who knows? But essentially this is all you do for the first phase and if you take too long you do get a load of dung spawned. Now this dung can be kind of annoying because it can block you off entirely and it can actually ruin solo runs if you're dunged too much. But on this invocation level of 150 it shouldn't be a big deal. Now when the eggs spawn you basically always max on them so you hit all of the dark eggs. The light eggs don't actually spawn anything but as you can see the dark eggs do and it spawns this agile scarab that attacks with range so you need to kill that. While you're doing all this, you've obviously got to keep dodging the fireball. Now, this is more dung, so I'm going to move to the right, because when you've been hit, you can pick a direction to move. So keep that in mind. Now, when this phase is done, it's going to get down, and there's going to be a phase of kamikaze bugs that come at your location, with like these. There's a phase of this bug that you have to kill, and these scarabs heal the boss. Now in a solo, honestly, I just focus on the beetle and then when that's done, then I start clicking the scarabs just to see if I can stop them healing as much. And that seems to work pretty well. Obviously you let a lot get through because the dung blocks off a lot of the room. So honestly, you are going to be looking at a full health phase too. But that's not a big deal. And then you swap back to your melee gear and just do it again. As the fight goes on, the fireball will get slightly faster. In teams, I had a scaling of seven where I had to solo this and Jeez, as you probably saw in the stream, it got a little bit crazy. <laughs> it got very fast. Now this is the eggs again. If you have a buffer and you can't actually reach one of the eggs, the buffer one hits it if you put rigor on, which is nice. As I said, this is not meant to be a raid's guide, but I may as well talk about it while I'm doing it, because why not? It could help you guys. Also, it keeps me more focused, because like I said, I've not actually done a solo yet on normal difficulty, so this is going pretty well, to be honest. I've still got quite a few supplies left. So this is phase two. What you do here is you've got a melee and a major. This major always runs away like this. So you might have to put a long range weapon on to hurt it. You need to kill it because it spawns some red stuff that always hits you. Now, when it hit me last time in a solo, it actually killed me and hit 68. I'm not sure if that's in like just a solo or not, but when I was in teams, it didn't hit anywhere near that. It was hitting like 28s. So I have no idea. Now, when you've got them both killed, it's just scarabs and kamikaze ones again, and then Kefri awakens and then you just do the same thing and that's the last time you have to deal with those now this is not the last phase though what this is is the precursor to the last phase so once you've done this Kefri basically enrages and then you've just got to kill it one more time but it's got a lot less health now if any eggs do hatch I do kill them because the range hits can add up but you don't need to you can probably just sit there with protect from um, range on and you'll be fine now as you can see I am being sectioned off into a corner of the room there's not really a way to escape it there was one time I was lucky and it dunged the entire thing and then pushed me out like it glitched me through the dung. Not sure if that's intentional or not, but we'll see, I guess, if it ever happens again. All right, so that's the phase down. Now, it's got less health, as you can see. It's got 30. The problem is I have just been trapped, so this is quite difficult now, so I've got to focus. I'm going to pray mage here, just in case. Yep, so I got hit and it only hit me a 12 because I'm praying mage. That is fine. But all the agile things are hitting me with range at the same time, so I need to finish this fast. 
And there we go. Boss three down. Not bad at all. 20 minutes in. This is going crazily well. Now I've got one more left, which is Barbar the monkey, I like to call him. Now, for Barbar, the hardest part is this room. In a solo, you always get the true sight that allows you to see what's wrong with the room. That's what this skull means. And the pillars and the vents end up needing repairing. Now, in a solo, this is kind of like crabs. You just need to go around hitting all the monkeys. That's essentially it. But they do follow the combat triangle, so in teams, you might need to actually use them. So as you can see, there's red skulls. In a solo, you've only got to repair one, and all four get repaired. In team sizes of two, you only need to do two. In team sizes of three, you've only got to do three. And in team sizes of four and above, you've got to do all the roof supports. That's the same with the vents as well, so just bear that in mind. Now, the main problems with this room are these baboon shamans, which spawn a lot of creatures. Now, you need to kill these as fast as possible. As you can see, it only spawned one. And then the other enemy in this room that, you hit, that you'll hear... Oh, I've got, to I've got to do the pillars quick. If you don't do this, you take a lot of damage, so there we go. Now, the other creatures to look out for in here are the baboons that drop venom on the floor. Now, I can't remember what they're called, but you need to kill them really quick or else there's going to be venom all over the floor. Got to repair the pillars again. These are the ones that drop venom, as you can see. They drop it all over the place, and it's really irritating. In a solo, you can just kind of smack them for a 16 and be done with it. In a group, they've got more health. Now, this is the vents. So what I have to do is go into a vent and pour a potion into it, watch. And there we go. Now, it's worth noting that in groups, there's one more hazard that can occur. Your team can turn red and they have to use the potions on each other, which is a really interesting mechanic. But in solos, I haven't seen that happen yet. But either way, there we go. We are done. Now, the problem is we are out of prayer, <laughs> which could be an issue. I don't know if I really want to use these super restores to get my prayer back or if I should just drink one dose of Ambrosia to show you what it does. Let's show you what Ambrosia does. So you see I've got 68 health, 0 prayer, and 10 run energy. If I drink one dose of this, it goes to 125, 103, and 100. Now 103 doesn't even seem like that much, but you've got to bear in mind, I am only 82 prayer on this account. So 103 is a huge buff, but that's what Ambrosia does, and you get two every time you get one. Now I do get a resupply after this boss, so let's go kill it. On this boss, you simply pray melee and smack it. I prefer to smack it with range. Uh, honestly, I don't know the best thing yet, but both is really accurate. It shouldn't really do too much damage. This is actually raid level three because it's been buffed three times from the other bosses. Now, this attack that it's doing now is buffed with an invocation that I've got on. But basically, as soon as you see it, you run away. Another attack it's got is that it drops boulders from the ceiling, which you'll probably see in a second. Now, when you see these baboons, you need to kill them as soon as possible because they open up the sarcophaguses. And if they open up, they'll constantly fire out a magic attack. This attack it's doing now is one that I really should have avoided because all you've got to do is stand next to some rubble. But I was talking too much like I always do. Essentially, what this rubble does is depending on the team size, it takes a certain amount of hits. But whenever it fires that at you, you can stand next to the rubble and you take a lot less damage. That's essentially it. As you can see, it's going to do it now. So if I stand next to the rubble at any direction, I only take 5 damage and the boulder dies. That's essentially all there is to this boss, apart from the kind of sorta seg phases. As you can see, it runs to the top of the screen. If you're using range, you always max on the cracked boulder. I don't know if you do with every other like combat style, you probably do, but I've always used the buffer. But every time I hit the cracked one, it will always max, and then you simply run to the location of it. These scale to team size, so everyone needs to hit each boulder at least once to make sure it cracks. If not, you can go to the bottom and take a lot of damage. With a certain invocation on, that pit is death as well, so be very careful. But yeah, this is basically the entire fight. You just loop this and try to take as little damage as possible. As you can see, the baboons have been splashing on, so it's opened up some sarcophagus. That fires out a constant stream of this magic attack. So I need to try and avoid that side of the map now. The problem is this boulder is making me go over there. So I'm gonna have to pray mage. Which I don't even know if it does anything. It does, it lowers the damage to three. So I have to try and avoid this side of the map completely. It's worth noting, if you get hit by the boulders, you do get hit for like 36 damage in this invocation level. Which is pretty crazy. It's weird making a kind of video that's partly a guide for something like this. Because anything you can't just say, oh it does this amount of damage, oh it does this amount of damage. Because it changes every single, sing like literally every single invocation level. It's crazy. As you can see, I am nearly out of supplies, so I'm really hoping for a good supply chest if I can complete this. The problem is, these baboons are still spawning and I'm still taking a lot of damage. 
And now two sarcophaguses are open. And I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm talking too much. So I've just died. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave this and I will try again. Either way, that's how you do the first four bosses. So I'm going to focus up now and I'll see you when I'm back at this point. Okay, next attempt. Two bosses down already and we've still got seven brews left. And we get to claim one of these rewards. Look at this one. Only one less restore, but you get an Ambrosia. I'm grabbing that. Now, I don't need to use these yet, which is interesting. So, let's just carry on. Barbar -bar or Akka. Let's do Akka. I did them pretty fast too. 9 minutes 20 for both full bosses. Okay, so that's four bosses down. Now, I did use a lot of supplies because I actually did die to Barbar -bar once. Out of a mistake of mine, the rock came and hit me for like 68. Oops. So I did use a lot of supplies. However, I did just grab this supply box from here. Liquid adrenaline is kind of useless because I've not got a spec wet, but two restores, three brews, more buffs, and another ambrosia it looks really promising. All I've got to do now is do the final boss. Now, earlier I didn't actually get here, so let's talk a little bit about the final boss. First, let's enter the room. Now, I call this a final boss, but it's actually final bosses because there's multiple. And when you do things at each side, the, the, you fight one of these bosses, basically. So the first phase, you kill this obelisk. While you're killing it, it's pumping some red balls into this. And when this circle fills up and this circle fills up, they do a special. If you don't do anything, both their specials happen at once, giving you unavoidable damage, right? If you tank one side and they stagger their specials, which I'll show you, then this spawns some lights, you can stand between them. This spawns some lights, you can stand between them. Then this sends out an orb that you have to um, separate on if you're in a team. And this sends out an orb that you have to DD on. So with that noted, let's start. As you can see, it's sending red orbs in. So I'm going to tank one side which allows all of this red to go into here, which charges that up faster than this one, which staggers them, which you'll see. Yep, so if I do this now, Disco Lights are gonna spawn, and if you don't stagger them, they're both spawn together, and then as you can see, the next one's gonna spawn. There we go. And then next is damage. So what happens now is the left-hand side one fires orbs that you have to DD on, Honestly, when I'm soloing, I have no idea if there's a strat for it or if you just tank it, so I guess you just tank it. And then the right-hand side one fires orbs that you have to separate on. Again, I think you just have to tank it in solos. But they stay staggered for the entire fight. So, that's the strategy for this. Nice and simple. Now, when the obelisk falls, you spawn the guardian. The one on the right here, you uh, the one on the left, sorry, you range first. When it fires, you have to react to it like Versic P3. So that's a range attack, keep range on. That's a magic attack. And it's got like six attacks, and you've got to dodge these on the floor because they spawn a lot. When you down it, you have to put your melee gear on and smack the core. The reason that you do this is watch the hit splats. I hit 48 on the core, it hits 240 on the boss. It's absolutely huge. And then when it gets back up, you use the opposite attack style. So now I'm going to be maging it. That's a range hit. That is a range hit as well, I think. Nope, I ain't got a clue on that one. That is one thing that I've not figured out yet. That's a mage. This on the floor, you've got to go and stand in the triangle, basically, and try not to take damage. It's a shame the Blood Fury doesn't work on this core, though. I am taking a lot of damage here, but hopefully I can fix it on the last phase. As you can see, there's a lot of prayer switching involved, but hopefully this is it. One more. Okay, we got it. So now what happens is the last phase. Now the last phase is really interesting. Personally, I recommend using a buffer. But what happens is you don't actually pray against this. You stand, you see this tile that I've got marked? You stand to the right hand side of it, and then the left hand side of it, and then you stand in the middle. And that is essentially all this fight is. But during the fight, it spawns some stuff on the floor that you have to melee that increases your attack speed. And then it spawns two shadows of previous bosses that you've fought, which I'll go through when they spawn. It's really hard to commentate while doing this, so bear with me and hopefully I don't die. 
But yeah, as you can see, this is nice and simple. It's kind of like uh, running in chambers, if you've ever done that. I'm looking good because I've still got four doses of Ambrosia. And what Ambrosia does is it heals you to uh, like 120% of your hit points and prayer or something like. And I... <laughs> Let's just say that's crazy because it works from one health. So you could be one health, drink one dose of it, and it sends you to 125 HP, which is crazy. This is going well so far. As you can see, I've not took any damage yet, he says. But a shadow will spawn in a minute. There we go. So it's Arca. What Arca does is it attacks with range three times in a row, and then it attacks with mage three times in a row. So if, if you keep an eye on the left, you'll see it's fired two range hits at me, and then it's going to fire another. And then I can swap to Prey Mage because it's going to swap attack styles. Now, the problem comes when it spawns another shadow of a boss on the other side. Because then it's got two things hitting you at once and it's hard to keep track. And it is Kefri. So that will constantly fire at me. So this is difficult now because I've got to switch to range for Akka. But Kefri is going to keep firing magic bolts at me. So I have to play this very carefully. Okay, so now this phase is basically dodge everything that you can and tiles will fly on from the back. This is like a DPS check, like for Sunny's Nightmare. Just make sure that whatever tile you move to, you can hit, taking minimal damage. I'll drink an Ambrosia here. As you can see, look at my health after drinking that. They are crazy good. And then, ladies and gents, that is raid complete. I hope that was helpful, and wish me luck on spooning a purple right now, because that'd be sick. That's actually my first normal mode completion, but look at the supplies that I've got left. It's crazy. And it only took 33 minutes. Not bad at all. Are we ready? I'll be honest, I'm just going to do a walk like at Chambers. And let's see if we can get anything. If not, I'm happy either way we got the completion. There's a chest. That's the key. And then that's the sarcophagus, which is white. So nope. But let's see what we got. Seven Ranars, 21 Dragonstones, 31 Diamonds. That is some good loot. And on that note, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the raids content. And I hope you enjoyed the tune. And on that note, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream if you tuned in, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want some guides on any of the bosses or solo in normal mode like this, please let me know in the comments and I'll make them as soon as I can. Whether it's boss by boss or an entire video, it's completely up to you guys. Let me know, love you and leave you, and I'll see you next time. Bye!